Well, yeah, you know, uh, that's, that's a, that is a hot subject right now. And, and I don't have to tell you, you know, you being former law enforcement, it seems like, you know, this is just another case where everybody's going to jump to conclusions to their own agenda. But, you know, in my opinion, you know, from looking on the outside in, it's just one of those situations out there where it seems to be more of an excuse of not really what happened to this, this kid at all. You know, it's more like, you know, we got an excuse to go loot and everything else. And, you know, of course, if the, the storekeepers should happen to come out there and start defending themselves, they're going to be the bad guys, just like the law enforcement's on the, I'm not exactly a, the bad guy, you know. But you know as well as I do in these kind of situations. None of us are going to know anything until all the investigations are done, until all the preliminary has been done, until the, the uh, you know, internal affairs, everybody does that, and then we'll find the facts. And, you know, media being what it is, it's like they want to put everything out there, and, and it's just a huge, huge mess out there. And, and uh, you know, God love the Constitution, because, you know, I hate to say it, but if it was my storefront, and Beth knows this enough about me and my guys, you know, if, if you know, we shoot. Yep. Well, that's what I was saying. You know, if I if I've sunk my whole life into this store, and it's my store, it's how I make a living for my family. Yeah, uh, you know, I know there's insurance, and I know that stuff. But that's a process. You know, who's going to pay my bills? Well, the insurance is Philly farting around. You know, and one of the thing, and insurance right now isn't about what they're going to do for you. A lot of times, uh, what I've run into, even with automobile insurance, is is they punch holes in everything to try to justify not paying you. So, yeah, exactly. I, you know, I don't want to take that chance. You come through my front window to grab something, you're going to grab something at about 250 feet a second, nine of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm all too familiar with that. I, my first job was working for American Family Insurance and learning all about getting the insurance licensing and learning everything on how they do. I mean, your car is totaled. You know, what do they do? They're going to offer you the least amount that they can. I mean, that's their jobs is to save that company as much money as they can. So. Oh, well, absolutely. absolutely. Or just, or just deny it all together because for some reason, you know, you didn't have the right gas in it or the brakes weren't, it was just whatever reason. And yeah. Just like insurance won't cover it. If the police come in and kick down your door and it was the wrong house, insurance yeah. isn't going to cover it because there's certain things just like with nine 11, when, um, Bush came on air and said this was an act of war. Insurance does not cover acts of war. So the no. second he said that, insurance was like, well, guess what? We're not having to pay for the Twin Towers. Yeah, we're out. <laughs> we're tapping out. Mm -hmm. And that's that's unfortunate. That, uh, you know, that's it's just unfortunate. You know, you, you know what we've lost in this country? We've lost, we, we've lost people that just do the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, well, there used you know, to be I, I agree hundred percent, but I think we've lost sight of the the real traditions of this country. You know, we've we've taken the whole moral aspect of our our country, everything from God to the Constitution, and now it's just uh, any more is treated like a piece of paper that's just thrown out to the garbage. Let's change it. Let's do this. Let's do that to it, and we and, and we're seeing it. You know, we're seeing the the total whole fabric of America being ripped apart. And let's face it. You know, you don't have to be Albert Einstein to realize that if we keep going like this, we're headed for some serious, serious, serious trouble. And it, it's a scary thing for, for myself, you know, and I'm sure many Americans out there, you know, we love our country. We love everything about our country, the freedoms we have, the people who fight for these freedoms. But then when we have these politicians who go to Washington, and they're, they're absolutely ripping away at every you know, fiber of the fabric that holds that constitution together, where do you draw the line, you know? Well, it's, it's, t it's time to make our officials accountable for their actions. And, you know, the right, and this is kind of what I said earlier, with all the rioting and everything going on, that's not the way to go about it. You don't like what's going on where you are? Stand up, vote, and go about it the right way, because just like on Facebook, when we all sit here and fight day in, day out, you know, I'm fighting with liberals or I'm fighting or I'm, you know, posting a rant about this, that's not going to change the way our country is running. The only thing that's going to change it is getting the right people in office and taking it back and getting rid of the tyranny. Well, exactly. And, yeah. getting, and getting our politicians out of the hands of the big, gov of, of big corporations.
uh, you know, participating for some reason. I keep inviting them. They don't want to come on. Uh, you know, if you think for one minute that it's just the Republican senators and congressmen that are bought and paid for by lobbyists, then you're an idiot. Exactly. <laughs> it's, all, it's pretty much all of them. And, you know, I'm a conservative-minded, uh, but I believe in personal responsibility, and I believe that if you're going to do something, uh, take responsibility for it, both good and bad. Uh, exactly. Yes. And, and, and the only own way up we to can, your mistakes. Well, just own up to anything, whether it's good or bad. If you can own up to it, if you can, you know, if you say something or do something that offends somebody or, or, or that's wrong, take responsibility for it. And, and no right from wrong. And treat each other with some common decency. And that's what the problem and is. Love is that, thy neighbor. Exactly. Just treat, you know, if I'm, if I, if, if I'm a, a, a if I'm a uh, an insurance company, yeah, it's going to hurt if somebody loses their house and I got to pay out. But that's what I do. So why am I going to go? Why am I going to? Why am I going to take a homeowner that's paid thousands of dollars into my company, that's fed my family, that's kept me going, that's provided for me a lifestyle, and they have something that happens to them that they purchased their insurance for me to cover? The knee-jerk reaction shouldn't be, well, what can I do to get out of paying this? The knee-jerk reaction could be, what can I do, everything in my power, to help my customer? And that's They lost. chose me. They that, chose, you know, that agency. You know, we're not required. You're required to carry insurance, but you're not required to choose, you know, either Allstate, American Family, Geico. You don't have to be required. To go to a certain place. I mean, you have a choice of where you want to do business. And there's good, there's good companies, there's bad companies out there. But you're right. I mean, there's no reason that as a nation, you know, we've come to of how to get out of things versus how can I fix this the right way. Or how can I screw somebody over? <laughs> you know, how can I get ahead? I mean, I, you know, the, the, the be- I worked with a plumber for a while, and uh, he's one of the... the He's one of the best people I ever worked for, and he is a very successful plumber. And somebody asked him, uh, you know, how, how are you so successful? I'm out here busting my butt, and I can't get ahead. How are you so successful? And the guy said, well, I don't know. I just, you know, I don't know why. And I, I knew the answer. I mean, I saw, so we got called. It was an emergency call, and uh, the guy's toilet got stopped up. So we showed up, and I was helping him. So I was plumber's assistant. And he came in and he looked at the toilet and he says, "Yeah, hey, go get me this and this." It was a it was a wet wet dry vac and a and a uh, one of our rags. And I'm like, well, "Okay." So I we went it, we dipped it in the toilet, got the rag wet, made a seal around the wet dry vac, turned it on backwards, and sucked a, a hand towel out of the toilet. Took them all yeah. at three seconds, three minutes, as long as it took them. And he was talking to the guy and, "Yeah, what do you do for a living? Yeah, what do you do this? You know, this and that." And got done, and, and the guy's like, well, man, that that was it? And he says, yeah, that's it. And he says, well, man, how much do I owe you? And the guy says, don't worry about it. It only took me three minutes. I'm not going to charge you for this. I, well, I tell you what, here's my card. If you ever have any real problems or if any of your friends have any real problems, call me. And what do you think that guy's going to do now? Call you. He's going to make sure everybody in the world knows about this plumber who didn't show up and jack him for 80 bucks for doing three minutes of work. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's what we call customer service. You know, there's, I know people have forgotten about that a lot, but you know, it's just like in our business, we have a lot of customers that come in and we do the same thing, Mike. We have we have a little old guy that comes in there and has his gun sitting in the closet for the last fifty years. It's not functioning right. I'll take it back to the bench, or one of my guys will take it to the bench. And most of the time, it's just rent needs to be old. Something like that. It takes us five minutes, you know, get back to them. They want to pay us. We tell them, no, take our cards. When you have something seriously happen, come see us. Well, that's how you build your business. That's, that's just good, old fashioned, all American customer service. And, and that's something that we really need again in this country. If we had more of that, we'd be a lot better off as a country. And we'd have a lot better people out there doing the kind of work. But unfortunately, when you get the nail on the head, they want the customer base that wants the almighty dollar. And our politicians have gotten to the same point. They want the vote, but they still want that almighty dollar at the end. They want all the perks. 
And, uh, you know, we don't get into too many politics at the store, but we do at the entire time. And one of the uh, things that, that I've always said, and I, and I really truly feel this way, is, you know, you might have a young politician who finally gets up there to Washington, and he gets up there and he has in his heart the right thing to do for his people, no matter what side's on him, for whatever he believes in, he thinks he's going to go through that and he's going to fight. But then when he gets up there, you have the older guys, the ones that are sitting there, these career politicians, they walk up to them, they put their arm around, they walk down the hall and say, now, son, this is how we do things up here. And that's how it, how it seems to be the trend up there now. They sit there forever. They sit there for life. And it's just, when it gets right down to it, it it's, it's exactly what they're doing. It's, it's their agenda, not the true American agenda, what's best for the American public, what's best for the average American. And I think that, that if we could get our politicians to get more spite on that and care a little bit more and do more of that, we'd be a lot better off because I'm, I'm sure you guys feel as well as I do, and, and I have my customers come in. These people are really scared. They are really scared for what's going on in the country. We have probably sold more guns in the last three years than I have seen in years total. And, uh, you know, I don't know, Mike, I'm sure you know, you know, well, I'll tell you what, we got to take a quick break before we get into the last segment of the show. Do you guys want to stick around for about five more minutes? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, let's run some commercials, and then we'll be back and uh, on the air right now uh, with Beth and Kip, and we'll be right back after these messages. Okay, dead air. I love dead air. <laughs> okay, here we go. Give me a break. Yeah, I can't. Hey, Kip, during the commercials, you can't talk. You what? During the commercials, you can't talk. You got to mute your mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nothing like ending the show on technical difficulties. Here we go. Now, we got Kip trained. Well, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by E24.com. Put your social, put your zip code in there. Have them bring food to you. It's like having a food truck in your pants. Download the free app from iTunes. Or the Google Store. Start eating today. Be right back after these messages. I'm Mike Allen. This is the Armed Radio Global Network, and you're on the air. Route 106 Motors is the home of fine pre owned vehicles. Experience a no pressure sale with a family friendly atmosphere. Route 106 Motors has been practicing the same simple philosophy of low prices for over a decade, and it has brought us great success. Recently, while other dealers are closing their doors, Route 106 Motors is expanding. We are a wholesale dealer, and we own the property and pay cash for all the vehicles. This allows us to sell to the consumer for a lot less than the average dealership. We are a high-volume, small-profit dealer, and we pass the savings on to you. New changes have been made at Route 106 Motors. Stop by and check out our brand-new building. Route 106 Motors, located at 569 West Street, Check our website at Route106Motors.com and be sure to like us on Facebook to find out about all the latest deals and savings opportunities. Route106Motors.com Arriva da Firenze, Italia, Nesti Dante. Il sapone realizzato a mano, ispirato al bel paesaggio fiorentino e agli incantevoli profumi delle colline toscane. Splendidamente confezionato a mano in un'elegante carta fiorentina di ispirazione rinascimentale. Prodotto rispettando l'antica arte italiana della saponeria, grazie al metodo Coltron. Nesti Dante rimane una delle poche compagnie nel mondo che continua a tramandare il metodo tradizionale di saponificazione. Tecnica, creatività e ricerca si incontrano con la nobile antica arte italiana della saponeria. Sapone artigianale, di fama internazionale, sapone di lusso. Per maggiori informazioni visita il sito www.nestidante.com 